Hi everyone, welcome to Mostly Math. As you can see, this is a special episode since we have a special guest, a caricature that my wife drew of me for my son since he likes to draw. He'll be with us for the remainder of this episode. Hope you enjoy. And in this video, we are going to be extending the arctangent function to complex values. So typically we can only evaluate um, arctangent of one or arctangent of uh, pi over two or something like that. Well, in this video, we want to be considering arctangent of any complex number, say uh, square root of two e to the i pi over seven or something like that. We want to be able to evaluate the arct arctangent for complex values. Why? Just because we think it should be possible. And let's, let's go ahead and get started on that. We're going to begin by letting our complex function w, or omega, it doesn't matter, to be the arctangent of z, which of course tells us that tan of o omega, or w, equals z. And from here, we just want to use the complex version of the sine and cosines and see where it gets us. Okay, as we know, if we let z equal to tangent omega, well, it's going to be sine omega, of course, over cosine omega, which we know from elementary complex number theory can be 1 over 2i e to the i omega minus e to the minus i omega over one half e to the i omega plus e to the minus i omega. And of course we see that the one halves cancel out and we just have an i down here. Fantastic. So we have e to the i omega minus e to the minus omega over i times e to the i omega plus e to the minus i omega. And here we want to do a pretty obvious trick. We're going to multiply by e to the plus i omega. And when we do this, we get e to the 2i omega minus 1 over i e to the 2i omega plus 1. Looks pretty symmetric. And now we want to solve for omega or w in terms of z. So the next step is to multiply both sides of the equation by the denominator, which is i e to the 2 omega plus 1. <coughs> Excuse me. So i z e to the 2 i omega plus 1 is equal to e to the 2 i omega minus one, and basically we want to solve for e to the two i omega. That's pretty easy. All we have to do is subtract this, or yeah, whichever way I'm, I'm going to do it. Yep, yeah. okay, so this tells us we have, which one do I want to do it? Let's see. Yeah, I want to move the left-hand side over to the right-hand side. So I want 0 to be equal to, factoring out uh, iz here. So we have 1 minus iz e to the 2i omega. We need to subtract an iz here. So we get minus iz minus 1 or plus 1. Uh, let's see for minus one plus i z. And now we have a very interesting symmetry here. We have one plus i z, one minus i z. We can obviously see that we're close to the right answer. We just need to solve for e to the two i omega now. It's simply equal to this, add this to both sides, one plus i z over one minus i z. We can easily now take the log of both sides and divide by 1 over 2i to get the final answer. We have omega 
which is actually equal to the arctangent of z, just equal to one over two i natural log of one plus i z over one minus i z. That's our cool formula. This is what we need to know for the rest of the video. We have derived it, should be correct. There are several forms that you'll see on Wikipedia and so forth, but this is the one that I believe to be the most straightforward to derive. And remember, since it has the factor of one over two I up front, uh, there are other ways to go. Um, for example, here in the derivation, instead of multiplying by E omega, E to the I omega, you could call this something A, for example. And then this would be, you know, a squared minus one over i a squared plus one. And you'd solve for a and there'd be a square root and you'd use the properties of the logarithm to take the one half out front, which you need to do if you want to repeat the same derivation for other trigonometric functions, uh, like, uh, like the inverse sine of z, you'd have to do that trick. But for the arctangent, it works out nicely if you keep it like this. Hope you enjoyed that derivation. It's the slickest one I've seen. Now let's move on to some straightforward examples. First, we want to verify that the formula that we derived actually reduces to what we know about the arctangent formula for real variables before we go ahead and plug in complex variables into it. So I'm just going to demonstrate one value here, probably the easiest value. We want to know that uh, arctangent of one is equal to pi over four. We want to know that because um, tan, tan um, pi over four is equal to one. Since uh, we have the right triangle here, pi over four, the sine is actually equal to the cosine and both one over square root of two. So when you divide them, they should be equal to one. We want to verify that this is true. So we're gonna start by evaluating inverse tangent of one is by our formula here, one over two i log of one plus i over one minus i. So all I've done is plugged z equals one into this formula here. And now we just have to work with the one plus i over one minus i number here. We're gonna do the obvious thing, multiply top and bottom by one plus i or to rationalize the denominator. So we get one plus i over one minus i plus i, or you can use the formula z, z star is equal to um, magnitude of z squared, which for a complex number, z equals a plus b i, it's just equal to a squared plus b squared. That's how I always evaluate these sort of, of problems. So just one squared plus one squared, which is two. So it's one plus i over two. And, this is squared, of course. Evaluating the square, one half, we get one squared plus two i minus i, sorry, plus i squared, which is one, and these go away, it just becomes i. So interestingly, one plus i over one minus i is actually just equal to i. Perhaps you knew that. At some point I had forgotten that. So this problem was a nice reminder that the strange identity is true. So, it's just one over two i natural log of i, which, and this is the trick to evaluating these sort of logarithms. We want to write the complex number that we're trying to evaluate in polar form, which is particularly easy for i, one over two i log of e to the i pi over two, at least one value. The arctangent is multi-valued. We're gonna be choosing the principal branch here and log e of i pi over two is just uh, one over two i, i pi over two, which is pi over four as we hoped. So,
Right. Yeah. That's the same thing. It's the same thing as what I wrote here, obviously. Same thing. Just take the tangent of both sides. So we have indeed showed that it holds for at least one value. You can check other values, perhaps by a computer. Um, we're going to do one other value as well. Now that we have some indication that it should hold for real values, we're going to look at a purely complex value to see how we can use this formula. Since the formula is really not useful unless you use it for something. So, to that end, we are going to be evaluating the inverse tangent of 2 plus i. So why did I choose 2 plus i instead of 1 plus i? Well, you see that the math works out slightly better in terms of the polar coordinate description. You might ask why I did not choose i or minus i. Well, actually, the arctangent function has poles there in the complex plane, or, or rather, a branch point, so it's not defined at these values. Otherwise, I would have chosen those values. Next simplest one is one plus i, which is messy, and two plus i is slightly more simpler, so that's why I'm giving you this example. All right, let's begin. One over two i log of one plus i times two plus i over one minus i times two plus i, which, just uh, simplifying, we have 2i here, the i squared becomes minus 1, that cancels with that. So it's just 2i up top, and we have a minus 2i, minus i squared is plus 1, so it becomes 2 minus 2i. Obviously the 2s can factor out everywhere, so it becomes 1 minus i here. And now we're at the same situation that we were before. We just want to write this in polar coordinates. So let's go ahead and do that. I over one minus I is if I'm multiplying by one plus I on both sides over two again. Yeah, yeah, two, just two, all good. Yep, so far so good. We get an i um, minus one, minus one plus i over two. Now, we want to write this in polar form. We could use the straightforward techniques from elementary complex variable theory to just write it in re to the i theta form by brute force, but we want to recognize that this is closely related to the pi over four that we spoke about earlier. So I'm going to write it as 1 over square root of 2 times, uh, yeah, times minus 1 plus i over square root of 2. And this we actually recognize as 1 over square root of 2 e to the something related to pi over 4. I'll show you in a second that it's 3 pi i over 4. Since we have the unit circle here, we have uh, pi pi over four here, pi over four, sorry, four here. And this has one over square root of two here for the sine, and then one over square root of two for the cosine. But this has the first quadrant negated, so it must be over here. And this tells us the angle we seek is actually three pi over four. And this has that was a terrible horizontal vertical line, sorry. This has a minus one of square root of two for the cosine and one over square root of two for the sine. So it must be one over square root of two e to the minus three pi over four. Now we can proceed by taking the logarithm more straightforwardly. That was in the side. And now we have our main result is equal to one over two i natural log of 1 over square root of 2 e to the minus 3 pi i over 4. That was an aside. Okay, well the properties of logs, if we take a 
a log of a product, we simply add the logs. 1 over 2i log of 1 over square root of 2. Well, that's just going to be minus 1 half log of 2 using a different property of logs. The 1 over negates it and the square root can come outside. Now we have a minus Yeah, log e, 3 pi i over 4. Is it looking good so far? Well, it shouldn't both be negative. Ah, uh, yes, I made a mistake. This is actually plus. Sorry about that. The minus angle will be in this quadrant. This is plus. Plus, sorry about that. And now we basically have our final answer here. We're going to get a minus one quarter log two here, and the i is gonna cancel here. So our final answer is now, now let's see, three pi over eight plus i over four log two. That should be the simplest way to write it. I typed it on Mathematica, so it should be right. And this is how you use the formula to calculate log of a complex number. Maybe you don't need this particular one for anything, but it's just an example. The video was more to show you the proof of the formula. I think the proof is more fun than applying it. Hopefully you thought so too. And for homework, you can feel free to try and derive the other formulas like uh, sine inverse z, uh, cos inverse z, etc. Wikipedia tells me that if you are smart enough, you can write them in terms of a general formula and do one derivation for all the inverse trig functions. I'm not smart enough at this time to do that. But for homework, I think you should be able to do these two if you apply the techniques and use the method of letting a, a be e to the i omega and then writing everything in terms of a instead of a linear equation for these two you'll actually have a quadratic equation and there's a sample proof of this on wikipedia if you get stuck as well so if you enjoyed this want to see more please subscribe to my channel i'll see you next time